All right, folks, here we are in Lake Charlotte. Uh, we're coming pretty close to a fairly well-known adit that's out here way back at the north section of the, of the lake. It's, a, it's an old tungsten mine. And uh, from the photos we've seen, we, uh, we believe it may be sealed up and barred because it is, uh, it is a known bat hibernating spot. What do they call it? A hi hiberniculum. I hope I'm saying that correctly. That's the right word, but um, I have seen this uh, ad at Google Photos barred up. So we may not be able to get in this one today, but we, we did want to see it. It's a beautiful spot. There's the, the lake out there. And we come down this uh, old mine road in the woods. And uh, it comes to this clearing. Let's see. Should be around here somewhere. Um, oh, holy shit, okay. <laughs> here we are. Uh, just look for the water. There it is in there. Hidden in the bushes. And it is barred, but look, oh, it looks like there is a hole. Oh my goodness, let's have a look. There's some signs. This water's maybe a foot deep. There is a bar gone. The way it's designed, they had this bar that they could insert and bolt by the look of it. Yeah, these, that looks cut off. But if you look down here, there it is on the ground, the other one. So it looks like, uh, it looks like we'll be able to get in there today, because um, this is certainly big enough. Uh, as far as the bats go, um, it's only July now, so there will be certainly no problem in, uh, certainly not disturbing their hibernation, which I believe starts in October, November, when it starts to get colder. So if there are bats in here, they are awake and just waiting to come out tonight to hunt. So they're certainly not hibernating. Here's the, uh, the signage from DNR. Here we are just inside the mouth starting the journey. We have no clue what lies up ahead, but it's a wonderfully large drift. And it's a real deep reverb in here, if you can hear that. It's a, ooh, it's got a certain tone. All right, there's the, uh, the portal and the, uh, the grate where we came in. And uh, the water here, not too bad, it's, uh, it's below rubber boot level, and it does seem to diminish as we go on. How's it up there? Uh, that's a cold deep Nice, okay. Here's a look at the, uh, the carvings of the walls, and again, this is, uh, this is said to be a tungsten mine. Although there was gold mining done here in the Lake Charlotte area, this one was, uh, this one was related to tungsten, allegedly. Yeah, the walls here are awesome. Beautiful large drift. There's a hook there coming out of the uh, out of the rock. The water's uh, getting really shallow now. Uh, and the ties for the uh, old ore cart tracks are still embedded in the floor. There's no rails yet though. And up here, we're coming uh, into what he reports is a, a four-way intersection of sorts. Uh-huh. 
Well, okay. It's not just going to be a straight at it after all. We've got uh, three directions here to go, so... Alright, there's another hook. We're going, we're going down the left side that we followed. Sorry, the right side. And this uh, fairly dry drift, we're, uh, we're up above water really, just some uh, moisture on the, the ground from the running drips. But what a sweet, big, echoey, hard rock uh, at it. We don't often get them this, uh, this reverberant. A three-way junction that doesn't lead anywhere. So let's have a look at this, folks. Ah, yes, okay. To the left and straight to the right. There we go. Look at that vein up in there. I wonder if that has to do with what they were going after. I wonder if that's the number 32 vein. Is that the tungsten? Are you the tungsten? Source of the tungsten? And on the floor here, in the back corner, is uh, indications there was safe sex in the mine. Uh, Lifestyles condom. And there it is over there, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, condom use in a mine. Does that indicate sex in a mine? It, it must. All right, we're coming back to the four-way intersection from the mouth. There's the mouth in the distance. Like I say, this, this intersection's probably 150 feet in, thereabouts. Here we are continuing on the main drift, the main added forward. Again, there's that, uh, look at that in the rock. A perfectly flat ribbon. Let me adjust the light here a bit. A perfectly flat edged ribbon of a certain vein. Look at that go along. You know, all this is just plain old gray rock, just random, and then you come down to, uh, to this. It's got to have something to do with why they were in here following this. Alright, we're in a little further, and if you look here, there is this wire. Wire cable that goes up to the hook. Lights, that's a good idea. Yeah. And they actually continue on and on, hook to hook from this point, as far as I can see, actually. There's the mouth in the distance, and we're probably 250, 300 feet in now. And it, uh, it does keep going. He's up ahead there, seeing what he finds. Here we are at approximately what I'd say is the 400 foot mark from the, uh, the mouth that you see way down there in the distance. But here, we thought it ended because it just looked like an end. There was a wall here, but it's actually a hard left turn. And we're going to continue here and see where this goes. Haven't seen a bat yet though. Okay, there's looking back at the hard right turn at the end of the, uh, the main added coming in from the mouth where it ends. And then of course the, the, the hard left turn it took comes in here. There's that crazy vein again. And then there's a drift that goes down there a ways. And then over this way it continues. Is that an end down there? There's a right hand passage. There is a right hand passage that we're going to explore, so. All right, going down here to this uh, distant corner where it takes another hard right again. Let's see. Um, it takes a 
turn here with the, uh, the ore cart ties, the, the rail ties, and down this way we go. And he said it was an end down here, so I think they stopped for a particular reason. And it's an end. Yeah, we're going down this last drift that uh, seems to continue on, and we don't know what our fate's going to be up here. This may be the end of it, but uh, we're going to keep going. This one considerably goes further than the one over on the left. There's that string that keeps going, that wire. He's reporting it is a confirmed end. So this one ran parallel to the other one, just went further. I guess they just didn't find what they were looking for. And here at what I guess we could call is the, uh, the deepest point in this mine. There's a Donna and Tony. Maybe they are responsible for the condom, who knows. They know, we'll never know. Hey, okay, we're, uh, we're basically making our way back out because I think we've uh, essentially covered the entire, uh, entire workings here in the, uh, the Lake Charlotte Adit. Prasac Limited number 32. Had they not put this footer in, all of this water could have flowed out and it been dry, but uh, oh well, it creates a little lake here at the front. Nothing critical. There's that bar. There's the bar that was on the ground and it was missing when we got here, but uh, I think we can put it back. There's no way to actually fixate it there, but we see how they work. The other one's bolted, but uh, basically there's a, this method of sliding it on and kind of... It works, okay. If you notice, uh, this is the adit that's at, actually in the opening of the mine, every Mine Hunters episode. This is the, uh, the adit that we fly into to take you into the, the opening sequence. So, and then there are later pictures of this when it was fresh new bars and it didn't have those uh, removable bars, but um, it's interesting that it does. We were lucky that it did, or we would have never gotten in there today. Uh, some, you know, you win some, you lose some. Sometimes luck shines on you, but uh, there you go. We got to explore Prasac Limited level number 32 here on the Lake Charlotte shores. Here we are at the Prasac Limited Company Decline, which is nearby the, uh, the Adit into the uh, tungsten mine. This was a gold operation though. And now it's just a pond, looks like a frog pond, but there's more to it than this. It's gonna be difficult to photograph. We can see it with our eyes, but that's uh, where it comes up to level down there with ground level, and then it slowly gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And right here, 
there is an adit going into the ground, a, 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 an inclined uh, shaft or adit that goes downhill, also known as a decline, that's why they call it that. And it goes down to workings that are down under the ground here. Really hard to photograph this. The depth is uh, a good 10, 12 feet down to the bottom there. There's some old rotting logs thrown in there. But there is a portal down there. We're going to try and get a, a view of it from the other angle here. This is looking down from standing above the portal. Again, kind of looks like a frog pond, but deep and clear as hell. There's a portal over there in the dark just uh, to the left of that log. There's kind of some clouds reflecting from the sky. We're going to, again, keep trying really hard to get a shot of, but there's the portal right there. And she's deep and spooky down in there. You can see it plain as day. Beautiful arch going into the left, and it's under 12 feet of water right now. If you look closely, there is a, a pipe going straight into the portal. That's what this horizontal thing is. It looked like a log because it's covered in so much crap, but uh, that is the uh, that's probably the drainage pipe, and it heads right in. If you look closely there.